Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Professor Gavala, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Miller Effect. And the Miller Effect is a physical phenomenon derived from the Miller's Theorem, which states that if you have um, an impedance ZPQ, as shown here, uh, connected between an input and an output of an amplifier or a circuit, let me say input here, output here, uh, you can replace it with two separate equivalent equi um, impedances, right? So essentially, we're going from this circuit here, call this A, to this circuit here, call this B. And that's going to be the main point of the video, is how we do this, um, along as with a couple examples to show how effective it is. So to formally define Miller's theorem, um, we're going to state that it is a circuit analysis technique that states that for every linear circuit with a ground, so for example, again, if I have my ground here, and two other terminals having voltages, VP and VQ, so I have a voltage VP here and a voltage VQ here, and an impedance ZPQ, so this is my impedance, connected between those two terminals, right? So again, there's a voltage VP, there's a voltage VQ, and there's an impedance um, ZPQ. I wanna go ahead and replace this with separate impedances, ZP and ZQ. So this looks like um, ZP going to ground and ZQ going to ground. Um, and the new impedances are connected from each terminal VP and VQ. So this is just the formal written definition, but pictor pictorially, this is what we're trying to solve for. I hope this makes sense. Uh, and again, it's just an, a mathematical tool. Um, it simplifies our... Um, equations when we're doing our, our circuit analysis. And that's really why we consider it when doing high level circuit analysis methods. So again, the goal here is to find an equation for ZP and ZQ, right? Because given this equation or this circuit here, A, right, we know everything here, right? We know VP, we know VQ, we know ZPQ, we know IP, we know IQ, or we can find them, right? Those are given, right? Now we wanna map it over here, right? In such a way where the only thing that we're missing is the Z, ZP, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change to purple and I'm gonna say that the first thing we wanna do is find uh, our ZP. And in equation or in circuit A, let me, I keep erasing the A and B. Let me call this A and let me call this B. So in circuit A, I have this current A, P, A, right? So it's a current from node P in circuit A is equals to um, V, P minus V, Q over uh, Z, P, Q, and that's just basically Ohm's law, right? I is equals to V over R, or V over, in this case, impedance, Z, okay? And we know that from our circuit B, I, P, B is simply just V, P minus zero over Z, P. Or again, the current IP that's flowing through this impedance, right, is the voltage, right, VP divided by the impedance ZP, all right? So in order to make these two circuits to be equal to each other, all we need to do, obviously, is just simply equate IPA has to equal IPB. So what does that look like? This is VP minus VQ over ZPQ has to equal VP over ZP. If I go ahead and solve for ZP, 
right? Multiply it to this side. So ZP is then going to be equals to uh, this ZPQ times a VP over VP minus VQ, which is equals to ZPQ over one minus VQ over VP. Right. All I did here was I divided. Um, let me I multiplied by VP over VP. All right. That's all I did. So. In short, this is equals to ZP. Uh, let me call this equation one. This is my first uh, equation um, that goes with uh, the Miller's theorem. All right. The second equation um, is found using a similar method, uh, except I'm going to use um, Q now. So find ZQ. All right. And I'm going to say that I Q A is equals to VQ minus VP over Z P Q. Again, um, if I can zoom out maybe. Here we go. All right. So IQ is I'm going to start at this node, subtract it from this node. All right. And then divide by this impedance. And that's going to give me my IQ in circuit A. All right. And then for circuit B, my IQB is simply equals to VQ minus zero over ZQ. I hope you see how I get that. And again, since we want these two equations to equal to equate to each other, this is going to be I Q A must equal I Q B. And um, so this becomes V Q minus V P over Z P Q has to equate to V Q over Z P. Again, if we solve for ZP, this is simply VP times ZPQ over VQ minus VP. If I go ahead and multiply top and bottom by VQ, what I obtain is ZPQ. Um, I made a mistake here. Uh, this here should be not ZP, but rather ZQ. It should be ZQ, uh, VP, VQ. All right. So my result here, let me write it in a different color, is going to be uh, ZPQ over one minus VP over VQ. And this is equals to ZQ. Or again, this is my um, equation number two. All right. All right. To better visualize this for the next upcoming examples, let me let me assume a couple of things. Let me say that VP is equals to a V input and VQ is equals to a V output. As a result, if I say V out over V in, this is simply VQ over VP, which is equals to what's called the AV or the, the voltage gain, right? And then obviously, um, if I say V in over V out, this will be equated to VP over VQ, which is equals to one over AV. So the general term or the general equation you're going to find for um, Miller's theorem is this ZP, which normally is equated to uh, ZN or your input, your input impedance or your impedance connected to your input. This is normally equated to ZPQ 
or the impedance between the input and the output over one plus VQ over VP. But we know that VQ over VP is just AV. So this is your AV gain. All right. And, uh, and then next ZQ, which is equals to your Z output or the impedance connected to your output is equated to Z uh, PQ over one plus one over AV. And this here is essentially Miller's uh, theorem. All right. If you have any questions on this, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. So let's go ahead and take this quick example where we have VP uh, being my V input voltage input and VQ being my voltage output and having an AV gain of minus 10 and a ZPQ or a feedback capacitance um, of CF and in the frequency domain remember in, in order to analyze the circuit we want to take it to the frequency domain because it's a bit easier this is going to be 1 over CF times S right again keep in mind this is the frequency domain all right so Miller's theorem tells us that okay we can go ahead and simplify the circuit to have a capacitance connected to VP and another capacitance connected to um, VQ. Uh, we call this capacitance, let me call this CP, which is equals to just ZP. And we call this capacitance CQ, which is just equals to ZQ. Now, as you can see already, this circuit here is a bit easier to analyze than this circuit here. So you can already start to see why we might do this um, for more complex circuits, specifically when dealing with MOSFETs and BJTs. So using what we've learned previously, we can say then that CP is equals to ZPQ over one minus AV, which is simply one over um, CFS times one minus AV. Again, the CSF, the CFS is basically ZPQ and that's coming from right here. So I hope you, we can see that, all right. So let's go ahead and solve for this. This is basically equals to 1 over 11 times CFS because 1 minus negative 10 is 11. All right. So let's go back to the time domain. So this is the, this is the frequency domain. And it's equals to, um, let me write it over here, CF times one minus AV, which is equals to 11 CF. And again, this is in the time domain. And it's important for us to see both ways uh, so that we could map um, both in the frequency domain and the time domain. All right, so let's go ahead and find the next value, which is CQ. Uh, and CQ is essentially ZPQ over 1 minus 1 over AV, which we get 1 over CF um, times S, 1 minus 1 over AV, which is again equals to 1 over 1.1 CF times S. I hope everyone follows that. And this becomes, this is in the frequency domain. And if we wanted to write this in the time domain, um, this becomes CF 1 minus 1 over AV or simply 1.1 CF. So in general, what can we say? We can say then that um, uh, due to Miller's theorem, uh, the Miller effect 
on a feedback capacitance, all right, we can conclude to be this amplifier A is equal to minus 10, right, where this capacitance here is CF, my feedback capacitance, times 1 minus AV, right, and this here, which is going to be 1 minus 1 over AV times um, my feedback capacitance. And again, this here is ZP, uh, ZP, and this here is ZQ. All right, so just like anything in circuit analysis, there's always a trade-off, right? So what is the trade-off here? Uh, we get a simpler, uh, a simpler analysis method, right? So we can analyze um, this circuit easier. But what is the, uh, the con, right? The con is that, as you can see, if you're here, right, at this input, you look up here and you see a capacitance of CF, but then over here, it's an approximation because if you're over here, you see an, um, a capacitance of CF times 1 plus A, uh, or 1 minus the gain. So we call this the uh, Miller multiplication factor. This is Miller. This is the Miller multiplication factor right and what it does is it allows it makes the capacitance look a lot it has a much larger imp, uh, input capacitance right and this larger input capacitance can lead to uh, it could slow down high frequency responses uh, it could reduce bandwidths in, in amplifiers there's a lot of different things that this capacitance can do right that causes a lot of cons in our circuit um, but again we get the the pro of the we can analyze the circuit a lot easier um, so I hope that makes sense uh, again it's, it's a trade-off which in circuit analysis is sometimes worth it and sometimes it isn't a nice example or a nice situation where Miller's effect comes into play is if you have a cascode um, amplifier in this case I have a BJT where this is VN, this is VB, and this is V out, you're going to have parasitic capacitances uh, located here. And this is C mu, uh, let me call this two. This is going to be C pi two. This is going to be C mu one. This is going to be C pi one. This here is C, C, S, 1, and this here is C, C, S, 2. All right, again, let me leave it. This is Q1 and Q2. So in this situation, this, this circuit, um, the frequency response analysis of this circuit could be very, very complex, right? But we use things like uh, merge, merging, right? So you can merge capacitances in parallel. So in the comment section below, I want you to tell me which capacitors can be merged, right? And we can also use things like Miller effect uh, to split our capacitances or capacitors. So I want you to tell me in the comment section below which capacitors experience Miller's effect, right? Um, and I'm going to make a video following up on this specific circuit, answering these two questions. Um, but yeah, if you, if you can find the answer to these two, uh, please leave them down in the comment section below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or ambiguities from the video, please leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share my YouTube page. Thank you.